fun, and welcome to David and Jeff's Survivor Podcast. I'm David, and with me, as always, is... Jeff! How are you doing, Jeff? I am wonderful. How are you today, David? I am doing well. I'm excited. Today, Jeff and I are embarking on a new journey with you guys. We are going to be creating an uh, epic list of our favorite 200 Survivor characters. Yes. So this- so this is not, we are not making this the best characters of all time. You know, we're not putting any distinct criteria saying that we are objectively making, you know, the uh, official best characters. But these are Jeff and I's favorite characters of Survivor, top 200. Yes, and uh, I, I will put that criteria on. I will say that the, <laughs> these will be the best. Okay. All right, Jeff. I'm, Jeff I'm willing to... <laughs> I'm willing to make that claim. Okay. <laughs> but uh, so what's going to happen is today we're going to start, uh, we're going to start right at the beginning. We're going to start creating what 200 should be on the list. Um, and then from there, we'll start ranking them in future ones. But we, So we won't start ranking today, but we're going to just, uh, Jeff and I are going to sort of talk about some different seasons and come to some agreement of these characters should be on our list. Not necessarily, oh, this is number one or anything, but these characters should be on our list and these ones uh, shouldn't. (laughs) So, uh, we're going to be talking about some of the seasons that star people from the most recent uh, season, current season of Survivor Cambodia, and we're going to be talking about how uh, their sort of legacy and characters are building over both of them. So for each of the people, each of the Survivor characters, we're going to be looking at their uh, work as a whole on Survivor and not individually. So we won't have Sandra Pearl Islands on our list and then Sandra Hears versus Villains. We'll just have Sandra. I yep. was making a safe assumption that she will be on our list, Jeff. <laughs> I don't know. That's a, she, She'll be... <laughs> She'll, she's a borderline, yeah. borderline character. So, uh, so we will be talking about Survivor Cambodia uh, throughout this process as we get going. So we are going to start with a season that, unfortunately, in Survivor Cambodia, this person just had to leave for family emergencies. We're going to take a look at Survivor Panama first, the original season of Terry Deep, and what characters stand out and what, uh, what are some of our char- favorite characters from that season. So let's start with Terry. Do you think Terry should be on our list? Um, I would say probably. Yeah, I I think so. I think he had a major story arc in Panama. He was, you know, the last um, of his La Mina people, and he managed to win immunity all the way up to the Final Four and, you know, didn't even have to use his idol, but you know, lost it right at the end. So I think he was a major, major character. Uh, you either loved him or hated him, but he was uh, definitely a major character. And I think this uh, this season in Cambodia sort of helped his legacy as far as being likable because now people are going to remember him as, you know, leaving for his son and, and Danny Strong and all this. So I think that only helps his sort of reputation as well. Yeah. I agree. So, uh, what did you think of Terry's exit from Cambodia? Um, I, I kind of hinted to the fact last week on the podcast that I actually knew that this was coming. Um, it seems it, it's hard because you know that he had to go, and he was kind of in a, a not horrible position had he made the this 13 person merge, I think he would have, you know, had a chance because they've become bigger threats. Yeah. But it's just, it's tough to see someone go out that way. Yeah. What did you think of them, you know, doing it right at the beginning of the episode before the, you know, the theme song even, and then have the little snippet at the end? Did you like how they did it? Do you think they should have done? Well, I mean, they didn't really have another choice because they had to start the episode with the tribe swap. Yeah. So. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was sort of this, you know, they couldn't really do it at the end. Well, I mean, some argue that they could have done it at the end of last episode. But it's weird thing that it's right after Tribal Council 
like the night, you know, the night after in the middle of the night. So it's one of these things of, you know, it's not like they did the swap and then they did it. So they can't do this much building to it. It just sort of happened right there suddenly. And uh, I mean, I guess since Takeo didn't go to tribal council, they could have done it like after the immunity challenge in the last episode. That's the only other time I would have thought of them being able to do it. You can't do it after tribal council because too many people just tune out. So you're saying people yeah. see who gets voted out and then they turn the TV off. They turn it off. So they couldn't say, you know, they they edited it a little shorter last episode and then they just air the the scene at the end. I think that would also Yeah, I don't I don't think that's an option. I think the the only way they could have done it would have been to put it after the immunity challenge. Gotcha. Yeah. I think that also would have put an episode on a really down note. <laughs> You know, yeah. and here, here they started on the down note, and then, then they made sure at the end they said, you know, how his son was doing really well, and you know how successful it was. So they sort of ended on a happy note, right? So, and uh, yeah, all of our uh, support to Terry and his family and their son uh, Danny, and um, still continues to support us. He's going through his uh, recovery, but we're really glad that it all uh, ended up all right. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, other of our favorite characters from Survivor Panama. Well, I mean, if we just go down the boot order, um, you could start with, do you think that, well, let's talk about the borderline people at the end. I think there's a couple obvious people from Panama. Uh, Shane Powers, I think, is your number one choice for Panama. Yeah. Um, would think- you agree? Yeah, I, I think he's an obvious one of our favorite characters. He definitely was entertaining every time he was on screen. So I was really bummed when he didn't make Cambodia. So I think he's definitely a, a favorite character. Yeah, I agree. Um, other obvious ones, I would say that Sari is yeah. definitely a pick that we would want. Especially when we're looking over her whole Survivor career. I mean, she, she's a big character every time she plays. So Yeah. Um, then there, I, I think there's also a couple borderline people. I think our winner for this season is probably a borderline person. So maybe we should talk a little bit about him. Yeah, well, let's talk about Aris. I would say I have this sort of uh, thing where I'd, I'd like to include every winner just because I think you know, they are memorable in a sense that they did win the game and there's a lot of impact there. I think Aris also had blood versus water and his relationship with Vetus was also very interesting. I mean, uh, and him just being so blindly uh, blindsided right after the merge of blood versus water was also interesting. So I think there's enough to warrant a, a character. I mean, it's, if it was 100, I'd probably say no, but since we're going 200, I think there's room for him. Yeah, I agree. And I also just did the quick math, and uh, it looks like, on average, um, we're going to have about 6 point... It said 6.4, but when you count All-Star seasons, um, about 7... Yeah, on average, about 7 people per season. Yeah. And obviously, some seasons will be less, and some seasons will be more based on the character. Um, but I think that Aris is definitely in the top 7 people in Survivor Panama. Yeah. Uh, another one I would say would be a big character is Courtney Merritt. I think she was definitely a, a fun character. I enjoyed watching her, especially her relationship with Shane um, and, and all the dynamics there. I, I could see her being in the top 200. Yeah, I agree. All right. Uh, let's I talk about you're writing all of this now. Yes, I, I'm writing it. Don't worry, Jeff. Uh, Good. <laughs> Let's talk about, uh, this is a really borderline one for me, Danielle DiLorenzo. Yeah, I was going to bring her up as a borderline as well. I mean, she has been on two seasons, but I don't know if that necessarily helps her. Um, Do you think it warrants uh, being on the list? Um... I would say she's probably on the list side of the line, but I, I mean, obviously, as we go through these seasons, um, we're going to 
to have more than 200 people, I would assume. And so yeah. I would say putting her on our, on our short list is definitely a good idea. So maybe we put so an that by her name. So if we have 230, we get rid of all the asterisks first. Sure. Okay. But I mean, I mean, she was, she had some good moments in Panama. I mean, she did, she made this alliance with Terry and broke it. She had quite a few fights with Shane. I mean, she wasn't she wasn't invisible by any means. Yeah, I agree. So we've got all of the final four then. In in actually, all the final six. Yeah, let's talk about another border. Some borderlines, Bruce. Bruce can a guy. Um, I would say Bruce is probably also borderline. Um but probably on the side of, of entertaining. I mean, he had some good moments. Um, he had some he good had, moments. He had his uh, evacuation, which was just sort of funny. Um, you had his rock garden and his dealing with Courtney. Um, but the, I guess there's a lot of the middle of the season where he was just sort of there. Yeah. Absolutely, but I, I still think he's on the on the good side of the this line. Okay. All right, let's talk about one more Austin Cardi. I would definitely not put Austin Cardi on the list. He he's one that I think is as a good narrator of the season. I think he's one of the few slightly more entertaining side of Lamina, but I can't say of any, you know, standout moments or any big things that he really did. Yeah, I, I wouldn't put him on the list. The other person I would consider putting on the list would be uh, Bob, Bobby Mason. Yeah, my, my, I'm leaning towards no of him just because while he did have his boot episode, and I think the one before it were great. He actually didn't do that much the first couple of episodes. Um, he was more in the, very much in the background, didn't really say anything, um, didn't really stand out. So, and then he was gone. What he was the fifth boot, fifth or sixth. So I, I think, yeah. yeah. So I, I just think, compared to the other people, I don't know if he made quite as much of an impact. I mean, his one or two episodes were really memorable, but when you look at the rest of the season. I don't know if he was there. Oof. Okay. Um, I'll reluctantly agree to that. I don't know. Part of me feels like um, he should be on the list, but you do make a good argument that he was only really there for two two episodes. I, I can put it on the list with an asterisk by it. If you want. No, I, I, it's, all, it's okay, David. I'll okay. live. I, I think that's uh, pretty much it for Panama. I don't see us uh, doing Melinda or Ruth Marie or anyone. Nick Stanberry, the golden boy. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I, I don't think we're going to do Nick, too. Or Dan Fuego, unfortunately. <laughs> You're horrible. I know. All right, let's move on to another season. Let's talk about a season that has four people on this current season in Cambodia. One of them just got voted out. Let's talk about Survivor Kageon, widely considered one of the best seasons or the best season of modern Survivor. Yes. Um, well, I think uh, obvious choices, Alexis, Clint. Clint? There was no Clint on the season. You mean Cliff? That was my inside joke, that he was so memorable I remembered his name as Clint. No, oh, okay. Cliff, obviously, Cliff Robinson. Um, well, no, let's this, talk about Wu. This season, go on. I think Tony's a definite. Yeah, okay. Tony, Tony Vlachos, the winner for sure. I mean, he was so, so much a presence on the show and was doing all sorts of entertaining, crazy stuff with the Spy Shack. And Llama talking and everything else. I think he's a shoe in Let's talk about Wu. Does Wu warrant to be on the top 200 characters considering both seasons? I think so. 
And I know that might be a controversial opinion. Give me, give me, give me some of your reasons why. Well, I think that he had some great moments in Survivor Kagayan. His the scene where he tries to decide whether he's taking Tony or Cass is really compelling. Um, the scene where he is in, with Spencer in the Sonic the Hedgehog thing really funny. I mean, if I, I recently rewatched Survivor Kagayan, and I was kind of surprised at how visible Wu was throughout. He never had an episode where he had a million confessionals, but he had a good one or two epi- confessionals every single episode, and really was almost a narrator of that season. He was always present. Um, and so, I, I felt like what he was doing was entertaining enough. You've got that great scene in the village with the kids. In Survivor Cambodia, um, you've got him being sort of the underdog kind of consistently. He's always surprised. He's always blindsided. You have the stuff with Abby Maria. Um, I think I think he's in. Okay. I'll, I'll agree. Yeah. I think uh, this season was interesting. Yeah, we really didn't see <laughs> – seemed like we only really saw him around Tribal Council – where he would think that he's following the plan and then just get completely blindsided. Uh, and the, and then we did see him fight against Jeff Barner, you know, stand up for himself. So that was, that was his one sort of almost positive time where he was on Cambodia. But I, I still think he was a huge contribution to Survivor Kageon, and I think that uh, – that for sure pushes over. If, it, if we were only talking about Cambodia, I don't know if he would make it. But since we have all of Kage on, I'll agree. Yeah. So, uh, quick, do you did you uh, think this was a good move on Survivor to give out Wu out? Um, for Spencer, it was. <laughs> okay. I would say. Probably, I feel like like I I knew Spencer wasn't gonna go home once Savage once you had that confessional where Sierra was like I don't want to be the one who we name and I know that Sierra is compelling enough as like a person that she would be able to kind of convince people to go along with her and then she had Cass and Abby and everyone else on her side I I knew Spencer wouldn't go home. Um, I think they pro like my mind. I would have gone for Savage instead. I don't know that Wu was the person you take at out in that instance because you know he Wu's not going to cause any trouble in the merge. But I yeah, who knows? I could be wrong. I, I'd say it was a good move, but not a great move. Yeah, I think the reason my two reasonings why I saw them doing Wu instead of uh, Savage because this has been a big d- debate. I've seen a lot of people saying, "Why didn't you just get rid of Savage?" Um, but for me, A, it's much easier to get Abby Maria on board to vote out Wu than it is to vote out Savage. You know, she's going to say yes in a heartbeat to getting Wu out. Two, they want to make the appearance of Bayon strong. So they can still say, you know, we're still sticking to Bayon, you know. Um, and since uh, Wu was not part of the original Bayon, that gave him a that gave him an easier time to still claim to be true Bayon and vote one of Savage's lackeys out. Mm-hmm. But uh, here, let's here, talk I'm about... gonna make here a, I'm gonna make a pitch here for Survivor Kagayan. Okay. I think and there will be people beyond this, I'm sure, but I think every member of the final six should be on our list. All right, well let's so talk that would be number three, let's talk about Cass McQuillan. Definitely. Yeah. I think She's making a pretty big impact this season on Cambodia. I mean, she had this, she was the really, you know, she wasn't a huge part of any of the previous episodes, but she was always giving confessionals, showing how, you know, she was being nice cast. And now we finally saw Chaos Cast come back uh, this episode and this big thing of do I take out my arch nemesis or do I do this move that will probably better me in the future? Um and I mean, she was she, she's called Chaos Cast for reason for what she did in Kageon, and was a huge, huge character there. So I think she's a two in as well. And then Spencer Bledsoe. Spencer also definitely like his Charlie Brown edit is really compelling, and now he's had it for two seasons. 
Yeah, yeah, it's only growing of how <laughs> somehow he's still at the bottom every single time, yet he still manages not to get voted out, which is crazy. <laughs> Do you think the merge will be helpful for him? Do you think what? Do you think the merge will be helpful for him in San Francisco? Uh, I mean, <laughs> Spencer's the type of person where you're like, okay, um, everything, like, Every time there's a twist, everyone's like, well, it can't hurt Spencer. Like, he's in such a bad position, it can't hurt him. And then another one happens, and they're like, well, it can't hurt him. Yeah. I mean, I could see, unless all of Bion reunites, that could be really bad for him. Otherwise, I think, I think he's not the number one target, you know. I don't think unless unless Cass is making the decisions. <laughs> but all right, so then you think uh, Trish? You think Trish should be on our list? I I would. I think Trish is definitely on the list. I mean, you remember how much I love Trish. Um, her jury speech is top notch. Her she's got some great moments throughout. She has a fight with Cass. She has a fight with Alexis. She's always in the know. She then has a fight with Tony at STC. Like, I think Trish is 100% on the list without question. All right. And uh, number six would be Tasha. You think Tasha's also on the list? I think Tasha would be the person I'd be least confident about putting on the list of the final six. But I think Cambodia kind of pushes her over the edge. Like, she's compelling still. She's making change. She's making moves. She's doing things in the game and her confessional at the on the first episode of this season is great the whole like i'll pray for forgiveness like that's great i love it all right uh so other people in kageon let's talk about how about sarah lacina say that again how about sarah lacina from kageon you know, I rewatch. Like I said, I rewatched Kagayan recently, and I was very underwhelmed by Sarah. Um, I didn't think she was that interesting. Like she has the one really good episode where she uh, is the one who gets voted out. Um, that's an entertaining episode for her, and she has the the kind of storyline about being a cop with Tony. But overall, I was very. I did not. I remembered her being a lot bigger deal. I think a lot of people thought she would do better, so they hyped her up in the message boards during the season. But on a rewatch, she does not come through as well. Um, so you think not on the list or on the list with an asterisk? I would say not on the list, but I'm, I mean, if you think she should be, I'm willing to hear your argument. I don't know. I felt like she was, you know, until she got voted out, she was one of the main focal points of the season I thought you know there was there was Tony obviously there was then there was the uh, Lausanne crew and then her I thought they were the main focal points of the season Sarah Tony and and uh, you know Cass Spencer Tasha you know that whole disaster of a tribe so I, I mean I would say you know for, so while she was on there, I thought she was one of the major characters. And obviously, they built her up to be the first, you know, post-merge boot. But um, I don't know. I would put her at it as an asterisk. I'm not saying she'll make the list, but, you know, I think I think she's more deserving than some other people. Okay. All right, she'll have an asterisk by her name. All right, uh, the only other person I can think of is LJ. What are your thoughts on LJ? Eh. He was another person I was kind of underwhelmed by after rewatching. Yeah, I mean, he was sort of the focal point of the beauty tribe, but I don't know if that's saying much. <laughs> Right, the beauty tribe was overall horrible. <laughs> and they were the the least shown of the, all three tribes. So, Well, yeah, because they were eliminated, like, all in a row. Like, five of the beauty members were eliminated in a row. Yeah. Oh, four. Four. 
but uh, I don't think anyone else really makes the cut from Kageon. What do you think? I mean, I could see putting, like, Jatia. No, oh, yeah. Um, I probably wouldn't, but I could see if you wanted to make that argument. Um, since this is our favorite characters, I will not make that argument. Okay. I won't either. Okay. Let's uh, let's move on to another season. Let's talk about the person who was voted out last week. Uh, so let's talk about Survivor Samoa. Survivor Samoa. I think I mentioned this uh, last podcast, but I recently rewatched Samoa, and I actually it has improved for me uh, on a rewatch. It's not it's not it's not anywhere near the top of my list of seasons, but it's, it used to be dead last, and now it now it's higher up. So. Um, obviously, I, I think we have to put Russell Hance on the list. I mean, he's not my favorite person, um, but he did bring a lot to the show, and there were times where I was e- I was very compelled with Survivor by watching him. Yeah, I, I completely agree. So I, I think he did bring a lot to... Oh, well, especially Samoa, I would say, you know, it's when it's when you watch two to three seasons in a row of Russell that he really starts to grade on you. Uh, I, right. I do think he deserves to be in the top our, our character. Uh, what, are, what are your thoughts on Natalie White? I probably wouldn't put Natalie in my top 200 favorite characters. Like, she has a couple moments, but overall... I mean, if she didn't win, would we really talk about her very much? No, but I think since she did win, we should we should put her with an asterisk on. Okay. She may not make the cut, but... Uh... All right, let's talk about another big character, Shambo Waters. Another controversial one. I, I How think do you feel she, about Shambo? I think she should be on the list. I think she was a very big character in Samoa. She's another one that, you know, you either, well, most people love to hate her. You know, she was, <laughs> I don't know that many people who loved her, but I definitely think she was a big influence in the season and uh, brought a lot to the game. I found her entertaining to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would agree. She had some moments. Now we get to some more uh, borderline people. What about Monica Padilla? She just got voted out of Cambodia. We've now seen her two seasons. What do you think? I would. I don't even. I wouldn't even call her borderline. I'd say no. Okay. I I was leaning towards no as well. I I don't think she made that big of an impact in either season. Um, what about Jason? I would probably say no for Jason. Okay. What about uh, Dave Ball? Dave Ball, I would say yes, absolutely, 100%. But you also know how I feel about Dave Ball. Yeah. I think I think Dave Ball is a really entertaining character. I wish he would, we would have got to see him more. Um, so I don't know if he'll make it, you know, at the top of our list just because we have, he didn't think it up. But I do think he should be on the list. I agree. Um, John Fincher. No. All right. Eric Cardona. No. All right. Laura Moret. I'd say no, um, but I would not object if you said yes. I would say yes because I think she had a very big impact on Blood versus Water, even more so than... And I think when you look at it together, I think she's, she's deserving to to be on the list. Okay, David, I'm gonna I have to I'm gonna hang up for just a second, and I'll be right back in. All right. So we have. Uh, Five so far from Survivor Samoa. We have Russell Hanson, Natalie White with an asterisk, 
Shamble Waters, Dave Ball, and Laura Moret. Um, there's only one other person that I really think should uh, should be considered. Um, so when Jeff comes back, we'll talk about that person. But uh, so far, if Jeff said we're averaging, we should average around seven per season. We have seven that we chose from Survivor Panama. We have seven from Survivor Kageyan. And right now we have five from Samoa. So we're, we're doing pretty good. I don't think we'll get to seven uh, for Survivor Samoa. I don't think we're going to be putting like uh, Marisa or Betsy or uh, Mike Barassi or anyone on here. So, but who knows? We'll find out. So this would be a good time to talk about our sponsor of the podcast, the one and only Zoe's Lobster Shack. If you haven't been to Zoe's Lobster Shack yet, you're really missing out. 100% fresh, high-quality lobster straight from Maine. You're going to love it. Get the freshest, juiciest lobster you've ever had. All of the survivors rave about it. Every time I talk to a, a, a former survivor, they just mention how much they truly love Zoe's Lobster Shack. Um, and I think you will too. If you don't like lobster, don't worry. They have crabs. They have uh, hush poppies. They have uh, even chicken tenders for the kids. So be sure that you are going to Zoe's Lobster Shack. Try to go once a week if you can. If not, uh, you know, every other week, once a month. Just make sure that you are going on a regular basis so that you can sign up. Be sure to sign up for their rewards card. If you visit Zoe's Lobster Shack 10 times, you get a free lobster tail. So that is uh, that is really a good deal. Everyone loves a good free lobster tail. So be sure to check out Zoe's Lobster Shack. So we're still waiting on Jeff to return. Uh, and once he does, we'll continue talking about uh, our list but uh, is there any one that you really think should be on our list of favorite Survivor characters? Maybe someone from one of the seasons we mentioned that we didn't talk about. Let us know. You can do that by uh, leaving us a comment on our Facebook group, David and Jess Survivor Podcast, or on our website, survivorpodcast.blogspot.com. So... So be sure to uh, do that, and you can also subscribe to us on iTunes, David and Jeff's Survivor Podcast, so be sure to do that as well. So we're trying to get Jeff back on uh, on the line here, so hopefully he will join in just a second. Um, pretty good list so far. Um, our first two-timer to not make it, Monica Padilla. So we'll see... Uh, We'll see if anyone else joins the list, or maybe we'll have 19 other second chancers, and she'll be the only one, which would be unfortunate. But uh, 